Have you ever wondered why the color wheel is organized that way? I have, and with high school physics in mind, I figured it was probably because of Sir Isaac Newton. But was it? See, back in the 17th century, he discovered a visible spectrum of light by cutting a pink hole in his window shade to let in the sunlight. Then, refracted by a prism, it turned into an area of rainbow colors. Back then, color was thought to be the product of mixing light and dark, so he decided to map the colors he saw refracted on a circle, thus creating the Roy G. B. I. V. baseline we learned in school, also known as the colors of the rainbow, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo and violet. And here is a picture of the first ever color wheel. It was tragically colorless. The end. Or is it? After his discovery, Newton published a paper, and Johann Wolfgang von Goethe began his own experiments with color, but without the math and the physics part, hoping to aid the arts. He also dug deeper into the relation of color and light and color and darkness. He wrote, The highest degree of light, such as the sun, is for the most part colorless. This light, however, seen through a medium, but very slightly thickened, appears to us yellow. If the density of such medium is increased, or if its volume becomes greater, we shall see the light gradually assume a yellow-red hue, which at last deepens to a ruby color. If on the other hand darkness is seen through a semi-transparent medium, which is itself illuminated by a light striking on it, a blue color appears. This becomes lighter and paler as the density of the medium is increased, but on the contrary appears darker and deeper the more transparent the medium becomes. In the least degrees of dimness, short of absolute transparency, always supposing a perfect colorless medium. This deep blue approaches the most beautiful violet. This was also when Goethe decided to study the colors and their relationship with human emotion and perceptions, and so he created his own color wheel that is closer to what we use today, which did in fact have colors on it. The chromatic circle is arranged in a general way according to the natural order. For those colors diametrically opposed to each other in this diagram are those which reciprocally evoke each other in the eye. Thus yellow demands violet, orange demands blue, purple demands green, and vice versa. Thus all intermediate graduations reciprocally evoke each other. The simpler color demands the compound, and vice versa. So the color wheel founding fathers are Newton and Goethe, but later additions will be made in the 20th century with Alfred Munson. An artist and teacher figured it would be useful to have a systematic method to explain and teach color, a method that will make color measurable, but how do you even measure color? Where well, here come in the concepts of chroma and color value as additions to hue. Chroma, or as we know it now, saturation, would measure the intensity of color. Color value, now brightness, would measure the lightness or darkness of the color. Hue was color or shade, by the way. With these additions, Munsell would create a 3D color space. That's right, the color wheels are 3D now. So all of this is great, but still the color wheel isn't organized as how we usually see it. See, there are plenty of color wheels that came after Goethe and Munsell. The RIP color wheel is what you see more often. You know how in school we learn the primary colors are red, yellow and blue? Well, the secondary colors are a result of mixing the primary colors. So red and yellow make orange, yellow and blue make green, blue and red make purple. So if you make that into a circle and add the tertiary or intermediate colors and tilt it a bit, you get the color wheel organized as we know it. The RGB color wheel follows the same concept, but starting with red, green and blue. But we tend to use the RIB color wheel. The color circle based on the HSV color space showing all the colors with a value, that's a long ass name, this color wheel. So basically there are two of these, the HSV, hue, saturation and value, and the HSL, hue, saturation and lightness. They are based on the RGB color model and they were designed in the 70s by computer graphic researchers to align with the way human vision perceives color making attributes. And the original design was, as well as moon cells, 3D. This color wheel we see here was originally a cylinder. That's right, this is a cylinder. Basically, you would read it this way. The hue is the angular dimension starting at the red primary at zero degrees, passing through the green primary and the blue primary, wrapping back to the red. The central vertical axis has the neutral achromatic colors from white to black, creating the saturation and lightness dimensions. I know this can be a bit confusing. The HSL models the way different paints would mix together to create a color in the real world. 
Meanwhile, the HSP models have color appear under light. So to change the amount of light or value, depending on the model you use, you would have to go further up or down on your cylinder. This was intended for TV and electronic devices only, and has an ungodly amount of maths in it, as in a math that barely has numbers in it. So long story short, what you see and maybe use is a flattened cylinder. You get to move by changing the lightness or value respectively. So we can conclude the color wheel we know today is a result of a physicist and an artist that was expanded upon by a teacher and a bunch of engineers that wanted to bring color to technology. Isn't that an interesting mix? Color theory is extremely long and complex. But hey, now you know a little bit more than you did a few minutes ago. So tell me, how was it being tricked into learning a bit of color theory? Hope you guys like this video and leave a like and subscribe for good art.